continuing our look at the book of the prophet Habakkuk. In the first three sessions of this little series, we've looked at chapter 1, verse 1, chapter 1, verse 2, chapter 1, verses 3 and 4. So now we come to chapter 1, verse 5. You'll recall if you have been watching the earlier three videos that Habakkuk was a, a prophet. He had a burden. The Lord had given him some sort of vision or he had seen uh, something from the Lord. The Lord had communicated to him. And Habakkuk's cry in verse two was, how long will I call for help? I cry out to you, violence. And it was a desire, a plaintive cry by Habakkuk for the Lord to answer the question. And then we have a list of what I termed rather loosely nasties, a, a list in verses three and four of certain reprobate traits of fallen human nature. And violence, iniquity, wickedness, destruction, strife, contention, that the, the Torah was being ignored, that justice was not being carried out properly, and indeed justice was being perverted, and the wicked people surround the righteous. So Habakkuk has called out to God, how long? Lord, it's as if he was saying, Lord, I'm praying to you and I'm asking you, please, I ideally would love an answer from you. Well, in verse 5 and from verse 5 through to verse 11, the Lord God answers Habakkuk. And let's see what the answer was. So Habakkuk chapter 1, verse 5, and this is the, the Lord answering Habakkuk. Look among the nations, observe. Be astonished, wonder, because I'm doing something in your days you would not believe if you were told. For behold, I am raising up the Chaldeans, that bitter and impetuous people who march throughout the earth to seize dwelling places which are not theirs. They are dreaded and feared. Their justice and authority originate with themselves. Their horses are swifter than leopards and keener than wolves in the evening. Their horsemen come galloping. Their horsemen come from afar. They fly like an eagle swooping down to devour. All of them come for violence. Their horde of faces moves forward. They collect captives like sand. They mock at kings and rulers are a laughing matter to them. They laugh at every fortress and heap up rubble to capture it. Then they will sweep through like the wind and pass on, but they will be held guilty, they whose strength is their God. The Lord God answers Habakkuk in a very direct way. And I have, I believe, if I remember, mentioned already in this little series that we, when we pray for an answer for, from the Lord, the answer we receive may not be the answer which we were hoping for or indeed expecting. Because so often, isn't it, we ask the Lord, for example, Lord, what is it you want me to do? Where do you want me to go? Is this particular job the right job for me? What about this particular car? If I'm buying a car, is this the right car for me? Well, if you haven't heard from the Lord, or if you're not used to hearing from the Lord, if you, or if you haven't heard from the Lord in answer to your prayers for quite some time, what about asking him a question like this? And I've seen one uh, commentator pose this as a, as a suitable question to ask the Lord if you haven't heard from him for some time or indeed ever. Ask him, Lord, what is it that you don't like about my character or what I'm doing? Now, there could be a long list from which the Lord could choose. Quite likely there is. The Lord wants us to get rid of a list of practices and things which we do which are contrary to his will, which are not what we should be doing and, and, and the attitudes which we should be exhibiting. So. It's been suggested that if you ask that question, Lord, what is it in my life that you don't really like? That that is a good question to pose, to expect an answer from the Lord, for you to be convicted of any particular matter or matters, and then you can begin to put them right with the Lord's help. 
Here, the Lord is saying that he is going to bring about, um, he is answering the question to Habakkuk and saying that he is going to bring the Chaldeans, which is another way to describe the Babylonians, up against the people of Judah, the capital of which was, of course, Jerusalem. And these, they were fierce people, they were impetuous people, they were bitter people, we see from verse 6. And the Lord is saying to Habakkuk in verse 5, preceding, you've asked me for an answer. It's as if the Lord is saying this, Habakkuk, you've asked me for an answer. You're crying out, how, how long has this, this state of affairs got to go on? Well, in fact, I, the Lord, I'm telling you, you are going to be astonished. You're going to be amazed. Just look and watch because I'm bringing against your nation I'm bringing against your people people who are really wicked and who are really violent and they take captives it says here they collect captives like sand it says in verse 9 multitudes of people that suggests to me they would take captive and you know what did happen was history tells us this history confirms what the bible tells us that the Babylonians or the Chaldeans, it's the same people, they did come and they invaded Judah uh, and they came up against Jerusalem and they took away the people of Judah, from which, we, uh, from which the word Jew derives, they took away the, the Judeans or the Jews into Babylon, into captivity. So we have here actually history repeating itself because we know that what had happened uh, something over 100 years prior to this was that the Lord had warned the northern kingdom of Israel. This here we're dealing in Habakkuk with the southern kingdom of Judah. But over 100 years before this, the Lord had, through prophets, through his prophets, he'd warned the people of Israel <clears throat> that their disobedience would have a consequence. And the consequence was that the uh, armies of Assyria came and captured the northern kingdom of Israel and the tribes of the northern kingdom of Israel were, were dispersed. That had happened in 722 BC. Here we are, round about, and the precise date perhaps doesn't matter, and I've mentioned already that there are differences of opinion, but here we are in about 610 BC, where the Lord is saying basically to the southern kingdom, I'm going to do the same as I had done to the northern kingdom of Israel. He's saying, I'm going to bring against you fierce, bitter people, impetuous people who march through the earth. They seize dwelling places which are not theirs. They plunder, they steal goods and property. They are a feared people. Their justice and authority originate with themselves. They make up, they make up their own rules and regulations to suit their own corrupt desires and natures. And, the, and the, the justice and the authority, the way the Babylonians conducted themselves, would, would they made their own rules as they went along, as I've said, to suit themselves. And here they were, this people were, were coming against the people of Judah with horses that are swifter than leopards, keener than wolves, galloping horsemen, from afar, they fly like an eagle, swooping down to devour. All of them come for violence. It, it's, a, it's a picture of, conjures up one of great fear of this invading army who would come and they were so powerful. They would succeed because the Lord had said, I am raising up the Chaldeans. And when the Lord decides that something is going to happen, then that something is going to happen. And sure enough, we know from history that it did happen. The Babylonians or the Chaldeans, they mock at kings and rulers are a laughing matter to them. They, they, they just swept all aside in front of them. They, they laughed at the opposition. They will, verse 11, then they will sweep through like the wind and pass on, but, but they will be held guilty, they whose strength is their God. The Lord was going to use the Babylonians, the Chaldeans, and he did use them, but they would be held guilty. And we know that as the Assyrian Empire was defeated by the Babylonian Empire, the Babylonian Empire was subsequently defeated by the Medo-Persian Empire, 
which in turn was defeated by the Greeks and defeated by the Romans and then the Roman Empire ended. So it goes on, the, the history repeating itself. So the Babylonians would be held guilty. Their strength, the Lord describes, this is the Lord speaking to Habakkuk. He describes their strength as being their God. They were proud people. They believed they were self-assertive people, self-willed people. Uh, they believed in their own ability. They had no time for Yahweh, the, the, the only true God, the God of the Jewish people, the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. They had no time for this God. They believed in themselves. Pride. But they would be held guilty. What Habakkuk had been hoping for, we might perhaps understand from verses 2, 3 and 4, when he cried out to God, complaining about the, the violence and the deceit and the, 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 the Torah being ignored and there was destruction, contention and strife, we might well interpret the meaning or the intention of Habakkuk as being that of he, him wanting a revival of society. But instead, the answer which he got from Almighty God in verses 5 through to 11 was not a revival of society, but in fact a removal of society. That's the discipline, the judgment of Almighty God. And God hasn't changed. And it's no good us thinking, well, this was God of the Hebrew, the times of the Hebrew Scriptures, the Old Testament. It's no good us thinking that was his character then, but now, of course, because Jesus has come, everything is different, and God so loved the world that he gave his only son, etc., and therefore God is love, and everything is all nice, and God has changed. No, God has not changed. That is a heresy to believe that, that to, to adopt that sort of approach. God has not changed, and he is a God of discipline, and he is a God of justice and judgment, and he will hold people to account. Absolutely, that is part of his character, which is he is immutable, which means he's not changeable. That part of his character cannot be changed. So whereas we might think that Habakkuk here was looking for a revival of society, the answer from the Lord was a removal of society. That takes us down to verse 11 of Habakkuk. And I mentioned in my first uh, video message about Habakkuk that this was a dialogue a discourse between Habakkuk and Almighty God. In the next uh, video, we'll look at verse, verses, verse 12 onwards, which is where Habakkuk then speaks back to the Lord.